Welcome to A Look Ahead. We're delighted you've decided to join us. We study the Sabbath School lessons as prepared by the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And this series is a new one, Life Everlasting on Death, Dying, and the Future Hope. And this lesson, number one, for October 1 of 2022, is entitled, Rebellion in a Perfect Universe. Hmm. Life everlasting, death, dying, the future hope. Rebellion? Wow, this is a whole lot of things that we need to talk about all together. Well, as usual, we like to begin with a word of prayer. Father, we bow in humble submission, trying to understand these momentous issues in the great controversy. Now as we turn to a new group of ideas, group of verses and passages in Scripture, help us to see how they shed a light on this very important subject. Help us to understand it and see those who listen, may they understand it as well as our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. As we begin a new series of lessons, consider this. Jim? From the Bible Study Guide, many thinkers have tried to explain the origin of evil. Some suggest that evil always has existed because, in their view, good can be appreciated only in contrast to evil. Others believe that the world was created perfect, but somehow evil emerged. For example, in Greek mythology, evil started when the curious pan Pandora opened a sealed box out of which flew all the evils of the world. This myth, however, does not explain the origin of the evils supposedly hidden in the box. By now, how do they get in there? <laughs> by contrast, the Bible teaches that our loving God is all-powerful, 1 Chronicles 29, 10 and 11, and perfect, Matthew 5, 48. All that he does must likewise be perfect, Deuteronomy 32, 4, which includes how we, excuse me, how he created our world. How then could evil and sin appear in a, a perfect world? According to Genesis 3, the fall of Adam and Eve brought sin, evil, and death here. Adult Bible Study Guide for September 24. Adam and Eve were forewarned about the devil the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and what might happen at that tree. This is not in our lesson, but I can tell you elsewhere she said that if Satan had appeared as a, as a being, a, a human being or something like a human being, she would have fled. But of course he didn't do that. But Eve, one, accidentally wandered near the tree. Two, was engaged in conversation by the devil, speaking through a serpent, and three, believed his lies, distrusting God. As a result, rebellion against God, which began with war in heaven, spread to this earth. Today in our world, we see a mixture of good and evil. The roses with their beautiful looks and fragrance also have thorns. Beautiful birds, such as the toucan, which are very beautiful, attack and eat eggs and chicks from other birds, etc. Human beings can be loving, kind, and generous but they can also be vicious, hateful, even violent. All of this, of course, is the result of sin, which began with Lucifer beside the throne of God in heaven. Carrie? Reading from 1 John chapter 4, verses 8 and 16. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. And we ourselves know and believe the love which God has for us. God is love, and those who live in love live in union with God, and God lives in union with them. It's from American Bible Society. The fact that God is love, 1 John 4, 8, 16, conveys at least three basic implications. First, love by its very nature cannot exist closed in itself, but must be expressed. And in brackets, what kind of love is not expressed? God's love is shared internally among the three persons of the Godhead and externally in his relationship with all his creatures. Second, all that God does is an expression of his unconditional and unchangeable love. 
This includes his creative works, his redemptive actions, and even the manifestations of his punitive judgments. Actually, God's love has been expressed in his justice no less than in his mercy. Justice is the foundation of his throne and the fruits of his love. That's from Desire of Ages, page 762. And third, since God is love and all that he does expresses his love, he cannot be the originator of sin, which is in direct opposition to his character. That's from Adult Bible School Study Guide, Sunday, September 25. So why did God risk creating a universe with beings who have freedom? God is love, and love cannot be expressed without one within oneself. Love must be directed toward others, and love is the very basis of God's government. Gordon? Mark 12, 31 and 32, Jesus said, and he essentially was quoting from Deuteronomy 5 and Leviticus 19. Deuteronomy 6, 5. Deuteronomy 6 and Leviticus 19, 18. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second most important commandment is this, love your neighbor as you love yourself. There is no other commandment more important than these two. Good News Bible. As you look around in the world, is it easy to distinguish between the evidences of God's love still existing from creation and the evidences of evil woven in by the devil? Without freedom to choose, love is impossible. And God is not willing to love in a, to live in a universe without having free creatures who are capable of loving him in return. So you can look up our handout on love in the general topic section of theox.org under Teacher's Guide General Topics. And if you have the handouts that you can download, you can click on that link there. Think about this issue. Some people wonder why God, knowing everything before it happens, would create a being such as Lucifer. Having created Lucifer, does that make God responsible for evil? No, but it does make him responsible for freedom. God did not intend for sin to exist, but he allowed it to exist. But more than that, he made provisions for those who fell into sin to be redeemed by coming himself and dying that death which is a result of sin and making it clear to us what the choices are. Do we recognize the implications of exercising our free will? These implications might not only affect us, but also even those we come in contact with. So how did sin enter our perfect universe? Ezekiel 28. Mortal man, he said, grieve for the fate that is waiting for the king of Tyre. Tell him what I, the sovereign Lord, am saying. You were once an example of perfection. How wise and handsome you were. You lived in Eden, the garden of God, and wore gems of every kind. Rubies and diamonds, topaz, beryl, carnelian and jasper, sapphires, emeralds and garnets. You had ornaments of gold. They were made for you on the day you were created. I put a terrifying angel there to guard you. You lived on my holy mountain and walked among sparkling gems. Your conduct was perfect from the day you were created until you began to do evil. Okay, that's a point what we're going to have to focus on later, so go ahead. You were busy buying and selling, and this led you to violence and sin. So I forced you to leave my holy mountain, and the angel who guarded you drove you away from the sparkling gems. Let me interrupt here for just a second. This may be a little confusing to people who are not familiar with the way Bible, these Bible verses are organized. There are a number of places, especially in the Old Testament, where an individual person, usually it's a king or a prince or somebody like that, is doing something evil, and God describes that person, and then behind that person, he describes the evil force, Satan basically, who is causing the evil that that person is doing. So we're seeing a, 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 a person here, and behind him we see Satan being described. Okay? 
So I forced you to leave my holy mountain, and the angel who guarded you drove you away from the sparkling gems. You were proud of being handsome. This was Christ. This is, this is referring about Satan. It's Lucifer. No, the angel who drove him out. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. And your fame made you act like a fool. Because of this, I hurled you to the ground and left you as a warning to other kings. You did such evil in buying and selling that your places of worship were corrupted. So I set fire to the city and burnt it to the ground. All who look on you now see you reduced to ashes. You are gone, gone forever, and all the nations that had come to know you are terrified, afraid that they will share your fate. And many of the, the comments right there were true about the city of Tyre and the king who, who built that city and all he did. But of course, he wasn't in the Garden of Eden and so forth like that. So it's, you, you can see how there's a person here, but behind it is Satan himself. Much of the book of Ezekiel was written in end time symbolic language. And many instances, specific entities such as persons, <laughs> animals, and objects, and local events were used to represent and describe broader cosmic and or historical re uh, real, real realities. In Ezekiel 28, 1 through 10, the Lord spoke of the king of Tyre. Tyre itself was a prosperous ancient Phoenician port city as a rich, proud ruler who was only a man, but who, exclaimed to, who claimed to be a god and who even said, he even sat, he claimed, in the throne of the gods. So this was common. Was, I mean, the pharaohs claimed to be gods, and he, he, this man also claimed to be God. So we understand that that's the situation. Okay, Charles? Tyre was a, was a country. Well, it was, it, it was a capital Tyre, city, right. and then it ruled over an area, oh, yes. Right. Okay. Uh, what are we? Ezekiel Mountain? 28. Ezekiel 28, 1 to 10. The Lord spoke to me, mortal man, he said, tell the ruler of Tyre what I, the sovereign God, am saying to him, puffed up with pride, you claim to be a God. You say that like a God, you sit on a throne surrounded by the seas. You may pretend to be a God, but no, you are mortal, not divine. You think you are wise, wiser than Daniel? that no secret can be kept from you. Your wisdom and skill made you rich with treasures of gold and silver. You made clever business deals and kept making profits. How proud you are with your wealth. Now then, this is what I, the Sovereign Lord, am saying. Because you think you are as wise as God, I will bring ruthless enemies to attack you. They will destroy all the beautiful things you have acquired by your skill and wisdom. They will kill you and send you to a watery grave. Then they will come to kill you. When they will come to kill you, you will still claim that you are a god. When, can, when you face your murderers, you will be mortal and not as at all divine. You will die like a dog at the hand of a godless foreigners. I, the Sovereign Lord, have given this command, goodness Bible. Wow. So if you know a little bit about Tyre, Tyre was first built right on the edge of the sea, and it was doing a lot of business in the Mediterranean and so forth. And then an enemy came and destroyed the city, burned it down, and so forth like this. And so the people came back later, and they just pushed all that trash and so forth from the old city, pushed it out into the, and made a, 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 a small peninsula out into the ocean and built a new city out there with a wall around it. And they thought, nobody can get us out here now with this wall around it. And that's why he talks about, you, here you sit surrounded by the sea and so forth. But that mm -hmm. was also destroyed finally. Then Ezekiel 28, 12 to 19, this historical reality becomes an analogy to describe the original fall of Lucifer in the heavenly courts. So the king of Tyre, who was a human being living in the midst of the seas, what you just said, uh, now represents 
the anointed cherub who covers Ezekiel 28:14, living in Eden, the garden of God, Ezekiel 28:13, and upon the holy mountain of God, Ezekiel 28:14. A crucial statement in the whole account is found in Ezekiel 28:15, which says, You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. Hence, Lucifer's perfection included the potential for evil, the potential to do wrong. And that was because, as a mortal being, Lucifer possessed free will, part of which it meant to be a perfect being. And also Bible Sabbath School Quarterly Bible Study Guide for Tuesday. There never was any reason for Lucifer to rebel. There was no excuse for sin and never and there never will be. Sin is a mysterious not from Ellen White, sin is a mysterious, unexplainable thing. There was no reason for its existence. To seek to explain it is to seek to give a reason for it, and that would be to justify it. Sin appeared in a perfect universe, a thing that was shown to be inexcusable from the Signs of the Times, April 28, 1890, and also in the books The Truth About Angels. The great controversy theme pervades scripture, although it is not always immediately obvious, but the themes themselves are represented by certain individuals and and places. For example, see Salem, Mount Zion, Jerusalem, and the New Jerusalem, which all represent God's kingdom. By contrast, the other theme is represented by Babel, Babel, Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, and, and Satan, whose, counteract, whose counterfeit domain stands behind all of that. Throughout scripture, we see times when God calls uh, calls or called his people out of Babylon or Babylon itself and end time Babylon. See Genesis 11, 31 to 12, 9 when God called Abraham out of Babylonia or Chaldea. Many years later, God called the Jews back out of Babylon following their exile, Ezra 2. And finally, in the book of Revelation, God's end time people are called out of Babylon in Revelation 14, 8 and 18. God's people are called out of that Babylonian heresy to Mount Zion, the city of Jerusalem, the holy city, the new Jerusalem. So we see this, these things all through scripture. Get out of the sinful places, come away from those evil things, and come to my holy place, my city, my new Jerusalem, etc. So how does the Bible describe the original rebellion of Satan? Isaiah 14, 12 to 15, King of Babylonia, Bright, and mor bright morning star, you have fallen from heaven. In the past you conquered nations, but now you have been thrown to the ground. You were determined to climb up to heaven and to place your throne above the highest stars. You thought you would sit like a king on the mountain in the north where the gods assemble. You said you would climb to the tops of the clouds and be like the Almighty. Instead, you have been brought down to the deepest part of the world of the dead. Good News Bible. In the book of Daniel, we see the two conflicting themes played out in several different stories. You remember those different stories in the book of Daniel. Initially, Daniel was called to interpret the dream which King Nebuchadnezzar experienced. Daniel recounted the dream and then explained that Nebuchadnezzar was the head of gold. But Nebuchadnezzar did not want any other nation to succeed him, so he built a statue entirely of gold, as recorded in Daniel 3. Uh, he threatened anyone refusing to bow down to the, his gold statue with being thrown into a fiery furnace, and we know what happened. The story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Both Isaiah and Ezekiel tell interesting stories, starting with the story of a haughty and oppressive human, being, human king and then expanding that story to include Satan, Lucifer, who stands behind those individuals. Look at what I, you, you can read what Isaiah says about the king of Babylon in Isaiah 14, 3 through 11, and review what we just read in Isaiah 14, and you'll see what I'm talking about. So why is it so easy for us as human beings to slip into the pattern that Lucifer, Satan started practicing, the pattern of selfishness and sin? But for those 
who understand something about the life and death of Jesus, how could we ever be proud and boastful? The history of the conflict between God and Satan is summarized briefly in Revelation 12. The church is represented by a righteous woman who is attacked by a dragon with seven heads and ten horns. We are told that this dragon dra drags stars uh, from the sky, referring to the war in heaven and Satan's fall and the angels he took down with him. And when Jesus was born to the woman, Satan did everything he possibly could to destroy him, the baby Jesus. After the death and resurrection of Jesus, Satan turned his attention to the Christian church and persecuted Christians for many years. As you can imagine, knowing something about the history of Satan as we approach the end of this world's history, he is furious and determined to do everything he possibly can to prevent God's faithful people from living up to God's plan for them. We really do not know how much about the war that took place in heaven. For example, what kind of weapons were used in the war in heaven? Anybody have some insights into what kind of weapons were used in the war in heaven? Words. Words. Reasoning. Well, in any case, it was primarily a war of ideas, love versus selfishness. Deception. Yeah. Christ, Michael the archangel, the one who was like God versus Satan, the one who wanted to be like God. Various explanations have been given as to why in the Bible Jesus is sometimes called Michael the Archangel. At the most basic level, it is important to recognize that the name Michael means who is like God or the one who is like God. So there's a clue right there at the beginning. But it's also possible to see that clearly demonstrated in Scripture itself. 1 Thessalonians 4.16 tells us that, quote, for the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command and with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. That seems to suggest that the Lord himself will have the voice of the archangel. But there is even more evidence. Look at John 5, 28 and 29. That's mine. Uh, do not be amazed at this, for the time is coming when all who are in their graves will hear his voice. We read up there in, in Thessalonians the voice of the archangel. Now it's God's voice. And come out, those who have done what is good will rise to live, and those who have done ev what is evil will rise to be condemned. So the voice of the archangel is the voice of Christ. Thus, by comparing these two passages, we see that the voice of the archangel is also described as the voice of God. Jude 9 talks about the chief angel Michael fighting with the devil over the body of Moses. Certainly no one other than Jesus Christ could have fought with the devil over the body of Moses. So that should be another scriptural evidence. There are other passages in scripture where God is referred to as the angel of the Lord. See, for example, Exodus 3, 1 through 6, and Acts 7, 30 through 33. What do we know about the beginning of the great controversy in heaven and that uh, war that, re that resulted? Notice these very helpful explanations from the writings of Ellen White. Jim? There was no possible hope for the redemption of those Satan and his angels who had witnessed and enjoyed the inexpressible glory of heaven, had seen the terrible majesty of God, and in presence of his glory had rebelled against him. There was no new and wonderful exhibitions of God exalted, excuse me, God's exalted power that could impress them so deeply as those they had already experienced. If they could rebel in the very presence of glory inexpressible, they could not be placed in a more favorable condition to be proved. There was no reserve force of power, nor was there any greater heights and depths of infinite glory to overpower their jealous doubts and rebellious murmuring. Their guilt and their punishment must be in proportion to their exalted privilege in the heavenly courts. Ellen White, Redemption in the, or the Temptation of Christ in the, witness, in the Wilderness. Okay, so basically what that's saying is here are a group of people who chose to rebel in the very presence of God. Any one of them could have gone up to God and asked a question, 
asked for God's answer. God actually, Ellen White says, God actually called a meeting, called them all together and said, let me explain things to you. Jesus is not like you all are. He may move you among you as Michael the archangel, but he is, he is God. He is not just an angel. By contrast, Lucifer, Satan, is a, just a creature. He's just an angel. And he, he explained all that. Lucifer, Satan, and his followers rebelled at the very, in the very presence of God with the full knowledge of his love, character, and government. There was nothing more that God could have done to convince them to repent. They couldn't have dazzled them with anything else. They, yeah. Everything that they had to make a decision on was... They, they, God had already done everything he possibly could. <clears throat> so how did it all begin, Carrie? From the beginning, God and Christ knew of the apostasy of Satan and of the fall of man through the deceptive power of the apostate. apostate. God did not ordain that sin should exist, but he foresaw its existence and made provision to meet the terrible emergency. So great was his love for the world that he covenanted to give his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John 3.16 and Desire of Ages 22.2. Lucifer was convinced that he was in the wrong. He saw that the Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. As Psalm 145, 17, that the divine statutes are just and that he ought to acknowledge them as such before all heaven. Had he done this, he might have saved himself and many angels. He had not at that time fully cast off his allegiance to God. Though he had left his position as covering cherub, yet if he had been willing to return to God, acknowledging the Creator's wisdom, and satisfied to fill the place appointed him in God's great plan, he would have been reinstated in his office. Wow. So Satan, even, he, even after he rebelled and, and ran away from God and tried to lead others, he, he still, God would still have accepted him back. So that ended though at the cross. Yes, the controversy well, was ended. It, yeah, for sure, and yes. and it really ended when he was thrown out of heaven. But the but final the, thing, the final thing of the right, cross. Right. Yes, he had okay. a chance to go back, but yeah. now no more. Yeah. The time had come for a final decision. He must fully yield to the divine sovereignty or place himself in open rebellion. He nearly reached the decision to return. But pride forbade him. Pride forbade him. Wow. It was too great a sacrifice for one who had been so highly honored to confess he had been in error, that his imaginings were false and to yield to the authority which he had been working to prove unjust. That's from Ellen White, Patriarchs and Prophets 39.1. Gordon, why don't you take up there here? So continuing from a different section of Patriarchs and Prophets a page later, Rejecting with disdain the arguments and entreaties of the loyal angels, he denounced them as deluded slaves. That is, Lucifer is saying that. About God's angels? Yes. The preference shown to Christ, he declared an act of injustice both to himself and to all the heavenly host, and announced that he would no longer submit to this invasion of his rights and theirs. He would never again acknowledge the supremacy of Christ. He had determined to claim the honor which should have been given him and take command of all who would become his followers. And he promised those who would enter his ranks a new and better government. We'll do better. Notice that. He was claiming that selfishness is a better way to run the universe than love. Doesn't everyone who forms a new government say, I'll do better? Yeah. <laughs> We've heard that several times. Under which all would enjoy freedom. Great numbers of the angels signified their purpose to accept him as their leader. Flattered by the favor with which his advances were received, he hoped to win all the angels to his side, 
to become equal with God himself and to be obeyed by the entire host of heaven. Patriarchs and Prophets 40.1. This guy was so deluded that he really believed that he was going to win the entire universe to his side. Wow. Okay. Many were disposed to heed this counsel, to repent of their dis disaffection, and seek to be again received into favor with the Father and His Son. But Lucifer had another deception ready. The mighty revolter now declared that the angels who had united with him had gone too far to return. And he was acquainted with the divine law and knew that God would not forgive. So. He, he's a tyrant, and he won't forgive. Mm -hmm. He declared that all who should submit to the authority of heaven would be stripped of their honor, degraded from their position. For himself, he was determined never again to acknowledge the authority of Christ. The only course remaining for him and his followers, he said, was to assert their liberty and gain by force the rights which had not been willingly accorded them. Wow. Again, Ellen White, Patriarchs and Prophets, 40.3 to 41. Dwayne, you want to pick it up there? Even when he was cast out of heaven, infinite wisdom did not destroy Satan. Since only the service of love can be acceptable to God, the allegiance of his creatures must rest upon a conviction of his justice and benevolence. The inhabitants of heaven and of the world's being unprepared to comprehend the nature or consequences of sin, could not then have seen the justice of God in the destruction of Satan. Had he been immediately blotted out of existence, some would have served God from fear rather than from love. The influence of the deceiver would not have been fully destroyed, nor would the spirit of rebellion have been utterly eradicated. For the good in the entire uni for the good of the entire universe, through ceaseless ages, he must more fully develop his principles, that his charges against the divine government might be seen in their true light by all created beings, and that the justice and mercy of God and the immutability of his law might be forever placed beyond question. Go ahead. Satan's rebellion was to be a lesson to the universe through all coming ages, a perpetual testimony to the nature of sin and its terrible results. Okay, I want you to notice that. A what? A perpetual testimony to all ages. Okay, read on. The working out of Satan's rule, its effects upon both men and angels, would show what must be the fruit of setting aside the divine authority. It would testify that with the existence of God's government is bound up the well-being of all the creatures he has made. Thus the history of his terrible experiment, of this terrible experiment of rebellion, was to be a perpetual safeguard to and all holy again. beings. A perpetual safeguard to whom? All holy beings. The entire universe. This sin experiment is going to be a one-time event. God is going to preserve the record as a perpetual safeguard to all holy beings. Okay? To prevent them from being deceived as to the nature of transgression, to save them from committing sin and suffering its penalty. Okay, Patriarchs and Prophets 42 to 43. God took upon himself the responsibility of dealing with the terrible emergency. God had told Adam and Eve that sin would ultimately cause death. Remember Genesis 2:17 and also Romans 6:23. So Jesus died the second death, a direct consequence of sin and separation from God, his father, the only source of life. That was in direct response to Satan's lie to Eve in the Garden of Eden. So why doesn't Satan recognize the truth and give up the, his fight against God? Satan has been claiming his lies and following them for so many millennia that he has come to believe them. 
up to the very end at the third coming, he will still be trying to attack the New Jerusalem and trying to defeat God. Perhaps we should conclude that misery loves company. The Bible warns us of Satan's behavior. 1 Peter 5, 8, be alert, be on the watch. Your enemy, the devil, roams round like a roaming lion, roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Goodness Bible. So Paul told us how to prepare, Ephesians 6, 10 to 20. Finally, build up your strength in union with the Lord by means of his mighty power. Put on all the armor that God gives you so that you'll be able to stand up against the devil's evil tricks. For we, have not fight, we are not fighting against human beings, but against the wicked spiritual forces in the heavenly world, the rulers, authorities, and cosmic powers of this dark age. So put on God's armor now. Then when the evil day comes, you will be able to resist the enemy's attacks, and after fighting to the end, you will still hold your ground. So stand ready with truth as a belt tight around your waist, with righteousness as your breastplate, and as your shoes the readiness to announce the good news of peace. At all times carry for you faith as a shield, for with it you will be able to put out all the burning arrows shot by the evil one, and accept the salvation as helmet and the word of God as a sword which the Spirit gives you. Do all this in prayer, asking for God's help. Pray on every occasion as the Spirit leads. For this reason, uh, keep alert and never give up. Never give up. Pray always for all God's people. And pray also for me that God will give me a message when I'm ready to speak so that I may speak boldly and make known the gospel secret. For the sake of this gospel, I am an ambassador. Though now I'm in prison, Pray that I may be bold in speaking about the gospel as I should. And Paul is in, in prison in Rome as he's writing those words. We have documented well the truth that God is love. We know that he wants to express that love to all his creatures throughout the universe. But Lucifer, standing beside the throne of God in heaven, <clears throat> became jealous of Jesus and led to that rebellion which has resulted in sin. How is that even possible? Jim? The Bible's certainly good. What had been previously unbelievable became a tragic reality. The wise and beautiful creature, the anointed guardian cherub, Hebrew word is cherub, mishmash, mimshach, haso, kek, Ezekiel 28, 14, or the RSV, called Lucifer of the morning. Hebrew? Son of the morning. Hebrew, excuse me, Lucifer, son of the morning. And do we, let me interrupt for just a bit. Who else is called the son of the morning in the Bible? Jesus. Jesus himself. So Lucifer is here actually given one of the names of God. And that Hillel ben Shakar is also a name of, of, of God. Well, light is supposed to be synonymous with truth, and, and mm -hmm. if air is bearing, light bearing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, Isaiah 14, 12 of the New King James Version also translated as the shining one, the morning star, or the sun of the dawn, rose up against the eternal, <laughs> holy, caring, and loving creator and presented unjustifi unjustifiable accusations to exalt himself. Lucifer's self-centered charm, lies, deceit, and selfishness divided the angels and destroyed the perfect peace in the Bible study guide for number 13. And I'm going to ask you a question there. You're living, pretend that you're living in heaven at the time that Lucifer is starting the rebellion. And there's two sides. One side is love, peace, kindness, gentleness, etc. And the other side is selfishness, you know, all these lies, all this kind of stuff. Right. I mean, how it doesn't appear that way. They appear to be almost the same. Otherwise, those, you know, Lucifer is painting it as all rosy and good, what he's doing. It's for the good of the angels. It's good for the good of the, of the universe. What size freedom? That, but he, he's deceiving so so well craftily. that, that yeah, so craftily. 
So what what is he? What is it in the angels that in some of the angels that responded to that? I mean, he's saying, stand up for your rights. You know, be pretty high percentage of them. You know, yeah. he says a third of them, but he, that's getting close to half. Yeah, and that you know that's. And Ellen White tells us that until, actually, until Abraham's experience on Mount Moriah and especially at the cross, a lot of the other angels were, had lots of questions. It wasn't until the cross that they actually said, yes, Satan is really wrong. Yeah. They all heard the lies. Yeah. And, 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 and they some believed were swayed it. by it. But uh, the, it's been say, said, and the other two thirds hung around to see the, the, the results. And I, I want you to think about God's angels. So maybe had some questions. Think of them watching what Satan did to Jesus here on this earth as a baby, trying to get Jesus is killed by Herod, and all the way through, and then finally those final events, and Satan, all his his efforts against Christ at the end of his life, just anyway. Well, with some of the stuff we're living through now, is not all that foreign yeah. from these these texts that that we're reading uh, now. Yeah. Um, but but you know so, some of the things that happen that happen. Well, I mean the flood, the big one. Yeah, Tower of Babel, where you know, separated peoples, and I mean those kinds of things before before Abraham. I mean that that must have thrown quest, questions in people's in angels' minds. Well, and we've got to remember this. What was my understanding? The way this earth was created with, from Genesis one, mm -hmm. verse two, and following, is to educate those to those angels, those yeah. heavenly intelligences that were around. So that, that the two thirds that were not swept down with the tail of the dragon were educated to, and finally at the cross, they, they, they finally understood. And that's, that's why we read a little bit earlier the, the perpetual safeguard. Yes, exactly. The perpetual very, safeguard. Very this experiment is a one time event. God will never have to do it over again. It will be perfect, I mean, and I have jokingly sometimes said that Steven Spielberg will turn green because the panorama of the history of the great controversy will be in 3D living color. And everybody, and this will be at the third coming, the people inside the city, they probably will have already seen it, but then all the wicked who have who've been resurrected and are alive, every person who's ever alive will be there and they will see that whole panorama. And at the end of that, it will be so compelling that even Satan himself, according to Ephesians 2 and, and Revelation 15, no, Revelation... Philippians 2. It's Philippians, Philippians 2, but the, it, it's, it's repeated in, in Revelation, I've forgotten the exact verse. But what, we'll what be down doing, on his knees. Yeah. What we're doing here is exp uh, was Ephesians uh, 5.11. We're exposing, and that's what the whole life experience is, exposing the wiles of Satan and his Jim, deceptions. Jim, I think you're quoting Ellen White when you're saying half of the yeah. angels doubted, and the difference between half and one third. Pretty small. Are the ones who says, no, we're not gonna go that route. Yeah. I remember Emilio Kinnickley used yeah, to talk yeah, about this. Very so. much so. Right, right. Remember that Lucifer, the name means light bearer, was actually given some of the names of God, light bearer, the morning star, etc. The creature who was given a position next to the throne of God as a covering cherub to protect and support God's government ends up trying to overthrow it. Mm. The Bible describes Satan's rebellion as the mystery, the mystery of wickedness or iniquity. Second Thessalonians 2.7. Let's look at that for a moment. The mysterious wickedness is already at work, but what is going to happen will not happen until the one who holds it back is taken out of the way. Who holds it back? Jesus. Mm-hmm. By contrast, 1 Timothy 3, 6 describes the mystery of godliness as Jesus, quote, one, comes to this earth, living as a human being a perfect life, dying that awful death, and finally being taken up to heaven. This is also described in Philippians 2, 6 through 11, that we've been just been talking about a certain degree. Carrie? Reading from Philippians chapter 2, verses 6 through 11, 
who being in very nature, there's a footnote, or in the form of God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. But at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That's from the New That's, International Version. Yes. Okay, I want to I want to focus on that for just a moment. How many are going to bow? Every name. Every name. Everyone. Every Heaven name. above, earth, under the earth. That includes Satan, okay? And they're going to acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. In other words, what we're really saying here is the great controversy cannot come to an end until every being. Now, L Satan and his evil followers are not going to, are not going to, turn to be loving as a result of this, but they're going to acknowledge, even when they die, are going to acknowledge, God, you did everything you possibly could to save everyone in the, in the universe. And so when it's all done, God will live in a universe where there are no questions about um, his, or, his government. Also, God, what you did was just. You're just. Mm -hmm. Righteous. You're, You're righteous. righteous. Yes. Some okay. Might, <clears throat> some people use this verse that every knee will bow to say that everyone's converted. Yeah. And the universalist view that everyone's converted and everyone will be saved. Yeah. I think that's incorrect. The cool. universalists say that. I don't understand how you can come to that conclusion, but uh, some do. There are some do. Yeah. And okay, Gordon. Not stupid people. <laughs> From the Bible study guide: Evil is irrational and full of disorder. So it is impossible to find a logical explanation for its existence. There is no cause for it. Isaiah 14 describes the circ circumstances of Satan's fall, not its cause, namely pride. And Ezekiel simply states that the anointed cherub was perfect or blameless from his creation until iniquity was found in him. By disconnecting himself from God, <coughs> Satan broke his relationship with him and consequently cut himself off from the only source of life which results in dying. All creatures, including angels in heaven and humans on earth, were created in total dependence upon God. Only by maintaining that love relationship and cultivating God's presence is the risk of disobedience and rebellion eliminated and the abundant life secured. Knowing God and his character cherishing an appreciation of his goodness and fostering a grateful attitude is the way forward. There was no reason for rebellion in the perfect universe governed by love. No defect was present that, could, that would necessitate the improvement of God's style of rulership. We may describe the circumstances, when and what happened, but we will never be able to find a justification for the rebellion because no justification for it existed. Or exists now. I mean, there's never going to be a time. We can, we're going to review this. We're going to go back and forth over it, but it'll never, there will never be anyone be able to say, oh yeah, now I understand why that happened. There's a good reason for it. Never. I remember, I think it's chapter 29 of Great Controversy. If you could find an excuse for it, it wouldn't be sin. Yeah. Hmm. If there was, if you could find a reason that it was logical, it wouldn't be sin. Continuing with the last sentence of Teacher's Bible Study Guide, page 14, God allowed the evil because he chose to create not automatons or robots, but beings with a free will in order that they might love freely. And we've talked about that. Love is impossible without freedom. Many people have the idea that this world has always been controlled by two different forces, good and evil. In fact, a lot of people claim that they're not sure that God even exists and they're sure that the devil doesn't exist. This is just, they're just 
good forces than their evil forces? Uh, let's take a position that maybe there's only one force, mm -hmm. and that is evil, because mm -hmm. love does not force. <laughs> well, yeah. Right? Yeah, they... You can, have, you can have freedom without love. You can't have love without freedom. But love does not force. Yeah. It has energy, but it's how does it use that energy. It's not to, to violate somebody's freedom to choose. Okay. Uh, some suggest that these are actually two different gods. There's a, there's a good god and there's a bad god. You want to tell us about that, Duane? We do not believe that the universe is ruled by two rival gods. On the one hand, the living God, who is the God of good, and on the other hand, Lucifer, the God of evil. This dualism is foreign to biblical revelation and not compatible with its teaching. The scriptures attest that God created an exceptionally glorious and wise creature. You were the model of perfection, full of wisdom and exquisite in beauty, Ezekiel 28:12, who later rebelled against God. Thus. Lucifer, God's blameless creation, became Satan. The Apostle John describes the adversary in the following terms, that ancient serpent who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. Now let me interrupt there for a second. I mean, look at those names. Serpent, devil, Satan, deceiver. Uh, Put dragon in there too. Yeah, dragon. Beast. Yeah, yeah. Okay, go ahead. Um, incredible and shocking thought. The one who was in the very presence of God, who was in the heavenly Eden, in the celestial sanctuary, that very person rebelled against the loving God. His stunning actions against his creator seem unreal. The creator, the creation, dared to oppose his king and commander in chief. I mean, didn't Lucifer recognize that he was created by God? I mean, did he, he ever realize he was a creature? Did he ever did he ever create anything? Some people think that that Satan uh, just, uh, well just God evolved, and he got to that position first and built a barrier to keep everybody from getting to, to his position. <laughs> but he was a creature; doesn't understand that he's a creature. L. White talks about humans beings being human beings being a new and distinct order, and that they have the ability to procreate. And Lucifer, Lucifer, Satan doesn't have that ability. Imagine what he would do if he had that ability. He would fill up the universe with little Satans, like flies. <laughs> like flies, exactly. Okay. Ezekiel twenty-eight fifteen. Yeah. That for me. States that in the anointed cherub was found wickedness, NIV, and iniquity. The Hebrew term is avala, meaning injustice. Meaning injustice or unrighteousness. The one who was perfect and who should guard the integrity of God's law to secure heaven's government was accusing God of not being good and right, namely of being unjust, very unfair accusations. The term trade, Ezekiel 28, uh, 16, is in Hebrew, rekula, mm -hmm. is that right? And is derived from the root rakao, signifying to go about or to go from one another, either for one trade or number two gossip okay and I want to I want you to notice this mm -hmm. Satan is accused of going about yes. is he buying and selling or is he gossiping, gossiping and slandering and slandering yeah he's gossiping and yes. slandering for sure the context makes it evident that the trade or business cannot be in the mind here because it would be the only place in the Hebrew Bible where trading would be something sinful and that <clears throat> does not make sense. Therefore, the word rather suggests that the guardian cherub was going about and gossiping about God, accusing him of injustice, gossiping about his character, and spreading lies. Lucifer sowed mistrust and unbelief and led others away from believing and following the loving God 
Isaiah describes Lucifer's motives in terms of pride. There you are. His, his hubris, hubris, right. hubris was, yeah. okay? Yeah, hubris is, is someone who says, I can do this, I don't care, I'm... Mm. Was so strong that he wanted to equal, to be equal with God, to sit on God's throne, to make himself the king and uplift himself to the position of deity, Isaiah 14, 13. An unbelievable hubris, adult mm -hmm. teachers, Sabbath school, Bible study. There's another interesting part of this whole picture in Hebrews, uh, found in Isaiah 14, 13. You were determined to climb up to heaven and to place your throne above the highest stars. You thought you would sit like a king on the mountain in the north where the gods assemble. Any of you know what that term in Hebrew is? The oh, mountain where the gods assemble? assemble? Armageddon. When that, if you take the Hebrew expression and you tra transfer it into Greek, there's a little bit of change takes place. Armageddon. And that word gods is from the Hebrew Elohim. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the prophet Isaiah describes Lucifer's fall from heaven in the past tense. Ezekiel states that he has driven in the disgrace from the bound of God and was expelled. Then Ezekiel reveals what happened to Lucifer's heart, namely how he sinned in his mind by cultivating pride. Carefully notice the nature of his five uh, big I statements. I will ascend to the heavens. Um, I will raise my throne above. Number three, I will sit enthroned on the most, uh, most heights. Four, I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. And five, I will make myself like the most high. Where did that selfishness come from? Mm -hmm. This self-exaltation of Lucifer's heart is confirmed in Ezekiel 28, <coughs> 17. Your heart became proud on account of your beauty and you corrupted your wisdom because of your splendor. We're running out of time here. Finally, after this self-glorification is complete destruction is presented in the future tense, yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, the grave, to the lowest depths of the pit. The prophet Ezekiel concurs that the Lord will exterminate Lucifer, who became Satan, the adversary. His annihilation is so sure that Ezekiel uses the prophetic perfect tense to express its certainty. So I hope it's been clear that uh, Sin is, is, is something for which you cannot give any explanation whatsoever. Let's pray. Our kind and loving Father, as we have sought once again to try to understand more clearly these issues and how they all played out, even though we recognize there was no excuse for what Satan did, help us today to see what he's doing now and help us to resist him in every way we can and help the, all those around us to see how they can resist him as well as our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.